Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in Tube Lab number 73, we're going to take a look at the Photon 6H8C. That's what it's called in the Cyrillic alphabet. In English, it translates to 6N8S. And it's a close equivalent to the 6SN7GTB. And we're going to take a look at some other things, including vintage getters. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. We're going to take a wee break from our series on how to achieve great sound and do a mini review of an interesting tube I recently discovered. Now, I've carried the standard Photon 6H8C for a long while, and it's a good solid 6SN7 that I've been recommending for the filter position in the R8 and for customers who are on a very tight budget. When I recently restocked it, my supplier sent a bunch of the tubes from 1965, and they have a completely different getter and sound great. So I sent out requests for more from my contacts in Eastern Europe and got a couple of affirmatives. One supplier doubled the price as soon as I showed interest. But someone I've dealt with before in the Ukraine found a bunch of these and shipped them two weeks before the Russian invasion of his country. They just made it out in time. And will probably be the last order I receive of vintage Soviet tubes for a very long time. He sent an email as soon as tracking showed they had arrived at my post office. I think he was grateful they made it, as was I. And I followed up with a thank you and asked him how he and his family was doing. Here's what he wrote. Yes, I still in southeast Ukraine. My city, Melitopol, occupied by Russian troops now. Explosions are periodically heard and my family and I go down to the shelter, in brackets, basement, along with my neighbors. The situation is very difficult for Ukraine. Some cities are already badly damaged. Regards, V. I was thinking of cancelling the, re the review of these tubes, given that the Russians are trying to destroy the Ukraine. And then I got V's email, and I thought, let's go forward and I'll read what what this brave supplier of these tubes is facing today. Let's take a quick look at these tubes. Okay, so here's the standard version. There's your photon label. It's sort of a flattened diamond box. There's your standard Russian getter. It's a saucer getter. In this case, it's down at the bottom. They can be at the top. It's got back-to-back -back gray T-plates elevated with two rivets on each plate and, of course, a clear dome. They're nicely made tubes. Um, they're very low noise, low microphonics, uh, very reliable, and they sound okay. And about half of this order that came in a couple of months ago um, had the regular saucer getter, which is what I was expecting. I sell a lot of these tubes. They're, they're very inexpensive. Uh, the Brits would say, cheap as chips. <laughs> um, here's what the other half was. It looks like the same tube, doesn't it? Well, take a look down here. See this waste chrome? When you see that, that often means we've got a plate getter. And we're going to look at more vintage tubes with this type of getter in a minute. So just stay with me. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if you can see that big plate. There, you can see it right through the tube. You see that big plate? It's a big flat plate. And that distinguishes um, this version from the later version. Now, the, all these tubes that came in the order were dated 1965. But none of the regular saucer getters have dates before 65, 
and they are very commonly available and very cheap in the 1970s and 80s, in those date years. These, um, uh, in my next order, came in from the 1950s and 60s, and nothing came in uh, later than 1969. That was the last year they made, as far as I can tell anyway, it's the last year that they made this um, this bottom plate getter. So let's look at some more uh, vintage tubes. This is the Marconi 6SN7 GTB. It also was made in a GT version. Um, these are wonderful sounding tubes. Uh, very similar to the Photon and the, how they were built. You can see it's got the waist chrome. It's got, instead of a plate getter, it's got a large D getter. So the material that makes the gettering is in that, you see that bar that comes across the long leg of the D? That's the bar of the material that gets flashed off when the tube is first made. Um, these tubes have uh, a great open sound, but they suffer from um, noise issues. So it takes a lot of these tubes uh, tested electrically, and a lot of them tested live to weed out the bad ones. Once we get rid of the bad ones, they tend to be good. Not always, but they tend to be good. Um, let's look at some more, and I'll get to the point in a minute. If you're a, if you're a fan of vintage tubes, you know this tube right away. This is the famous Sylvania Bad Boys, the 6SN7 GT. This is the two rivet plate version. Again, very similar to the photons in construction. It has a larger waist chrome, and it's so big, I don't think you can see it, but there's a large plate getter just like the photon we were looking at. These sound amazing, but they're GTs, and they weren't made in the GTA or GTB version, so they're lower spec, and I I don't recommend them in modern equipment. They just get they get noisy. They get overdriven basically by the circuit. And the only way I found to safely play them is in my uh, custom Universal 6 or 12 SN7 preamp, which was designed to play all 6 SN7s, including the 12 volt version. And talking about the 12 volt version, here's another fabulous sounding. 6SN7, but it is the Tungsol 12SN7, and this is the mil-spec version, it's the Jan version, with the mouse ear micas. Aren't they cute? <laughs> They're very easy to spot. They're incredibly rare. They're incredibly expensive. I found a bunch of these a couple of years ago, I think. Anyways, Somebody, I had them in the store, I put them in, and they've been in the store for about a month, maybe even two months, and nobody noticed them. <laughs> then all of a sudden, somebody found them, and they sold out in 24 hours. The whole, the whole lot, boom, gone. Um, anyways, um, these sound just amazing. And they've got probably the defining feature of this tube is the definition is really superb. And we're going to do a review on the photon and talk about that in definition in just a minute. The Sylvanias are known for their base. And it's just an all-around good tube with warm sound, good clarity, just does everything well. And the base is lovely. I'm not talking about thump-a-thump-a bass. <laughs> not, you know, get your landlord pissed again bass. Or, you know, show off your how good your bass reproduction is to your neighbor two blocks over just nice, good quality base reproduction. Last up is a regular Sylvania 6SN7 GTA, another fabulous sounding tube. It's got a chrome dome, and it's that means it's got a regular, you can't see it because the dome is so huge, but it's got a large halo getter at the top. So having a, a solid getter at the base of the tube is not a guarantee that the tube is going to get is going to become a fabulous tube or it's going to sound great. But what I want to talk about is can the getters possibly be making a difference? This is an example of that. Both tubes from 1965, very similar. The getter 
at the bottom, the plate getter sounds much better than the regular version. It's just got a lot better clarity. I don't have an answer for this question. I'm just showing you a selection of tubes that have a bottom getter that sound great. I can show you just as many tubes that have a top getter and sound great as well. So I, I, I'm just putting it out there and maybe someday we'll have an answer for you. But how did these tubes sound? Ah, okay. Well, let's take a look at the review sheet. So, uh, full disclosure, I was running uh, digital files on my con cube, my Astol and Karn con cube, <laughs> which I love. Um, it's a it's a great way to play digital music. Um, at um, how do I say this? Uh, an affordable way to uh, have a higher end DAC and um, and direct stream uh, DSD. Okay, um, and I was using my Universal 6 or 12 SN7 preamp, the kit preamp, and I was using the URI mono blocks. So I'm in pure class A after after my digital player, and th that's going to make a difference. In fact. Any system that I review on um, in the future, I'm going to talk about because the uh, preamp is designed to bring up the second harmonic slightly, very slightly. I mean, it's down, where, where was it, minus 62 dB or something? It's way, way, way down. You shouldn't be able to hear it, but it makes a difference. Um, we can hear it. We heard it right away um, when we were doing our, our test listening sessions. Um, and that, that's going to affect the sound of the tube to my ears. And of course, when you plug the tube into your system, it's going to be different. Okay, so bass was good plus. It had good tone. Um, you know, if tubes have one thing that they don't do well, it's bass. In fact, bass is hard from the, from the beginning of the reproduction in the studio to the recording to... Um, uh, to tubes trying to trying to reproduce it all the way through to the transducer to your speakers everybody has a hard time with bass so i find anytime i give something a good or a good plus mark that's that's perfect <laughs> sometimes you know like with the sylvania bad boys I'll have it as a, a, v, a very good plus or an excellent. I forget what we reviewed those at. It's so long ago now. But that's fairly rare. Mid-range is very good. The three C's. Crisp, clean, and clear. And the uh, treble was the three C's, but it was definitely forward. In fact, I would call it a bit bright. The two tubes I tested were very low noise, zero microphonics, which is great. Uh, they had excellent definition and a really nice sound stage. So I'm going to call this tube uh, a best budget buy, definitely. Let's get back before we close up the review and talk a little bit about the treble. If you've got a system that's running, you've got some clip speakers that's running um, horn tweeters, for example, and you're already struggling with a bright system, this is not a tube for you. You will not like this tube. Uh, if you've got a system in which your tweeter is neutral, or particularly if you've got a system in which you'd like to sparkle it a little bit, this would be the tube for you. It's going to sparkle up that top end nicely. So, is this the perfect budget tube? No, there's no such thing. Um, in fact, there's no such thing as the perfect tube, period. So, tubes are going to have pluses and minuses, but when you look at how good this tube sounds, particularly the definition, which is something as an audiophile I love, when you look at the reproduction that it gives you for the price, which is not expensive, this all of a sudden becomes a tube of interest. So I run these tubes daily uh, in my system simply because I, I 
just can't justify playing a very expensive tongue saw every day of the week and wearing the suckers out because tubes are, have a finite lifespan. Now, does that mean that I don't I don't play premium tubes like this um, once in a while? No, I absolutely do. If I have um, friends over, in fact, on Monday I've we've got a little dinner party planned, and one of the guests is interested in in my system and interested in vacuum tubes and learning more. I'm going to be putting the tongues in probably. <laughs> Maybe some Sylvanias. I haven't decided yet. Maybe both. Um, but I, I will definitely play my best tubes uh, for, for a critical listening session or for a special occasion or for a new piece of music that deserves it. <laughs> okay. So what's been going on over at Melatone Kits? Well, I'm working on our first kit that will be a tool for amp builders. And I'll be running a Wii contest next week. So if you want to join in on the fun, subscribe to Melatone Kits. I'm going to put a link below. And, uh, and here's going to be your hint. That's it. That, those are going to be part of the kit. And the contest, well, you'll have to be on the channel to, uh, to figure out what the contest is going to be. Okay, what about what came in this week? Well, let's just make some room here. Well, a whole bunch of the photons, of course, are now tested and they're in the store. And I sold, what did I sell? I sold five pairs right away to somebody who's already listened to, um, listened to the first he bought, he bought in early on. I'm not even sure how he found those tubes. But anyways, he bought in early on and he said, Wow, Jim, <laughs> for the money, these are great. Something like that. I forget exactly. He's promised to put a review in the store, um, which would be great. Reviews, I don't advertise. The so reviews are really important. What else came in this week? Well, a whole bunch of my favorite 6550s. And these are the true vintage Svets and um, 6550Cs. And they sell, I sell a lot of these as sets for the R8. And they've turned out to be great sounding tubes for the KT88 type. And, um, and they've turned out to be very reliable. Uh, in fact, um, Svetlana made, now Svetlana has been gone since the early 2000s unfortunately, um, but they made some great sounding vintage tubes. They were in business for a long time in St. Petersburg. And be careful, uh, there's, there are copies and copies and copies of Svetlana tubes, unfortunately. And they even copy the labels, the plates are different. So there, uh, for example, I, I should have dragged it out, but the copy of the 6550C uh, doesn't have rectangular holes. It has circular holes. And the same goes for the KT88 version. It has punched um, circular holes. So you know that those are the fakes. Um, well, you know, they, they, they're called reissues, but frankly, I, I honestly think this is just total bullshit. I'm getting tired of it. Uh, if the reissue sounded like the, the original vintage tubes, I would, I would get behind them because we need good new tubes. Um, there's a limit to how many vintage tubes we can find. But frankly, I just, I almost never find a reissue that sounds even close to the vintage tubes. And many of them just aren't reliable. So I started calling them fakes because what else are they? Anyways, if you stay to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Now the Mullard sale is over. It ran for all of February. It was a great sale. Lots of people jumped on it, and um, and I'm wa I'm waiting for some some comments back because the tubes haven't come in yet. But uh, I'm hoping everybody loves their tubes. I love the sound of the Mullard EL 34s, and uh, even though I gave back hundreds of dollars in discount money, um, I feel good about it because more people get in on the sound. Uh, but all the regular discount codes are available and there's a secret code. 
You can figure it out if you try hard enough. There's only one secret code, um, and it's easy to find. And I have flat rate $20 shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vowels and More signing off. Cheers, everyone.